Welcome folks, this is House Corrections and Institutions Committee. We're uh, back on S18. Um, I know we're running probably a little late. Logistically, we're trying to figure out how to get another draft. We're looking at a strike all amendment to incorporate the uh, amendment that we received this morning from the Attorney General's office that really is a clarification um, amendment. And we're thinking the best way to approach this is to do a strike all instead of having a floor amendment to the bill. Uh, but we're trying to find um, a drafts person <laughs> to do the strike all so that we can get ready to vote. Um, so in the meantime, Representative Taylor has, um, he's proposed that we change the name of earn time to uh, earn sentence to reduction and um, we did put it up the flagpole uh, in the other body and they're not supportive of that name change. So um, we just need to get a feel from committee members on that. So I'll open it up to committee members. Um, Sarah, you did have your hand up, right? Yeah. Okay. I could just offer, I mean, I, I think I, understand the spirit behind the desired change. Um, but I think when you look at how these programs are spoken about nationally, um, the name earn time and, and good time are really used to describe these kinds of programs. And I just, so I really feel like it um, can cause some confusion, um, even though it would probably be in there. And I, I really, it's one of those things where, um, I know we're already changing it, the language from earned good time to earn time. And that's kind of consistent with what other things are doing. I think, I just think at this point um, to push for that kind of change, um, it, it feels like a, it could cause, not, it's not just a detail. I think it could kind of cause some confusion. Can I respond or you want me to wait or do you want me to, how do you want to handle this? Well, I'm seeing if there's other hands first. Okay. Okay. I want to see if other folks want to weigh in. Karen? Yeah, so I wish I kind of could go either way. If there was momentum from the committee, I could see changing it. But if the majority of folks are fine, I'm, I'm not pulled either way. I think um, as Representative Coffey was saying, like, I understand the, like how it helps define it but I also understand how it could be confusion. So if that's helpful at all, but just putting it out there, like I don't have strong opinions either way. Scott? I'm thinking about to what extent uh, earned time is, 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 a, is kind of a, a term that people use. Good time is a term that people use and, I, and, may, and, and earned time seem pretty closely related to that. So, um, it, it, it's, if it's sort of a, a, a national brand, you might say, then, then um, I think we ought to go with that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back to the Global Warming Solutions Act, which was in, uh, passed out of the committee that I was on last biennium. And I hated that name because it's not solving global warming. It has little to do with solving global warming. It's about preparing for climate uh, change, really. Um, but you know that was the brand. Um, so other states had passed Global Warming Solutions Act, so that's what we were passing. Hmm. But um, you know, so I guess I, I guess I'm thinking that uh, I'm go going on, on on Sarah's recommendation that earn time is more consistent with what people understand the term to mean nationally. I would just stay with that. Well, Scott, then whoops, you just finished, Scott. Uh, Lynn. <laughs> Well, uh, I can go either way. I hate to say that and be a fence sitter, but I do like earned sentence reduction. I think it clearly defines what it is that we're trying to get at. And that's it. We can start a whole new group of words instead of good time. So that's my opinion. Thanks. Uh, Linda? 
Um, so I still ha find a distinction between earn time and good time nationally. So, um, and how they're used. However, since I did ask that specific question to our alleged council um, because of that concern and because Vermont did not have that distinction and it's defined in the, the bill, I'm comfortable with it, with the way it is. Comfortable with earn time? Yes. Other folks? So earn time and good time are a term of art. Um, it's well known throughout the whole justice, criminal justice system, correctional system. Um, and in looking through, oh, oh great. I have a draft. I have a strike call. It just came through. Did you get that? Oh Phil? my gosh. Yeah, I didn't wonderful. just get it. Strike call. Good. Didn't go through editing, but that's okay. Um, in looking through through it, we'd have to do some quite a few changes here within the bill. Um, it's not just changing the name, the title on section two. You have to get into the language in the bill. Wherever it says earn time would have to be changed for mm. that. Um, and the longer we delay this bill, the more, um, the more stress we're going to put on DOC and the more complicated it's going to get in terms of implementing it, because this will not be accepted in the Senate. And then it will come back to us as an amended version. So you're adding on at least at least a week to 10 days. So we just, we just keep turning in circles. So I just say, leave it the way it is. I mean, that's going to be the reality of it, folks. I'm just laying out the lay, of the, the lay of the land in terms of how it will play out in the Senate and then what the legislative process is after that. Lynn? I hate to admit this, but I didn't read the first sentence. It says, an act relating to limiting earned good time sentence reduction. So it's in there. So let's leave it as is. Don't ask why I didn't read the first line. I have no idea, but I it's just did. Title. <laughs> right, it's in the title of that. I mean, I'm just laying out how that process will work. Uh, if we do change the name, I'm just laying out how that's going to work. And section two does the same thing. Well, section two says, right, it takes out good. It says earn time reduction of term. So, Kurt? Oh, um, I, just, it's, I just did a quick Google search on earn time and corrections, and it does say that 31 states provide this incentive called earn time. So apparently that is truer than I expected That because I, uh, I assume the other states were calling it earn good time and we were gonna come up with earn time and that would not be the same thing. So I will, uh, I'm happy with, with uh, earn time as the name for it. Well, I'm not happy with Thank it, you. but I'm accepting it. <laughs> okay, so you're withdrawing this. Sure. Madam oh. Chair, do you do you need Bryn Hare to jump in at this point? She's willing to, if you sure. need her. Sure, that would be great. Just in case we need a legal person, and then so this has been sent to all of our emails, folks. Alice, can we do this where we go down line by line by line, just to make sure everyone's on the same page? Sure. Yep. So this is on our email, and this is a strike all amendment. And the only, uh, this is the same. We, Bryn is coming on with us at some point here. And I know, Phil, you're probably going to be in the process of putting this up on our web page at some point. I don't know exactly when is the appropriate time to do that, but... Uh... 
We do can talk it. about that later. Yeah, if you can do, be in the process of doing it now, I think it would help because there may be some people who are streaming in and then they could go to our webpage. I know it's gonna take some time to get there, but. So you mean the thing, the, the document that Eric sent us, you would right. like it posted? Yes, it's draft number 1.1. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, yeah. I have a question about that. Yeah, I mean, well, it's because it's a, yeah, it's a strike call. So that's why I was not sure what the draft would be, but it's really draft 1.1 to the bill. It's not a separate amendment. So it comes in as draft 1.1 to the bill because it's very clear that the house if you read the introduction, respectfully report they have considered the same and recommends that the House propose to the Senate that the bill be amended by striking all or striking out all after the enacting clause and inserting in lieu thereof. Where if you scroll down to section four, this is section four, section three, two, Page four, section two, number five, where it says notwithstanding, this is where the language was incorporated from this morning that was highlighted. Notwithstanding one BSA section 214, an, of, an offender who is serving a sentence for a disqualifying offense on January 1st, 2021 shall not earn any earned time sentence reduction under this section after the effective date of this act. So that's very clear that for those folks who were sentenced prior to January 1st of these, any of these disqualifying offenses, once the law becomes, once this bill becomes effective, they will not earn any more earned time. That's the only change to the bill. So if we can start, Bryn, thank you on short notice for coming in. We're trying to get this bill out. We had an amendment this morning, a technical amendment from the Attorney General's office that Eric worked on. He did it as a separate amendment that would be offered to the bill. And in really thinking how to best present this on the floor, we thought the best ways to do a strike all to and incorporate that amendment. So that's what we're looking at here is the strike call because the goal is to try to vote this out this afternoon. Okay. Um, so so uh, my, forgive me because I am not and haven't been involved in this bill, but you do you have a you have the bill from the Senate and you're trying to vote it out today. Is that correct? Yes, S18 and Eric has just submitted to me draft 1.1. Okay. Can, can, can Phil send uh, Bryn a copy? Oh, yeah. And is it Eric isn't available for right now? Is that correct? Eric is unavailable. Okay. He's tied up with other committees. Okay. So he's unavailable. So, Phil, have you, you can email to Bryn the draft that Eric just did. Strike yes, off. I'm doing that right now. Okay. Welcome to the world of Zoom. <laughs> okay, it's sent to Bryn. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Welcome. And I know Michelle is not here. I'm not sure when Michelle, she was in House Judiciary, right? Yeah, I sent her a text just now. Okay. Is she testifying or is she? I think she's introducing a, a, a bill. Um, okay. Okay. And, and Madam Chair, should this be, or Bryn, should this be labeled as draft 1.1, a strike call? Uh, S18 draft 1.1. I think that's all that's needed. Strike all amendment. That's what it looks like. Yep, draft 1.1. .1. Yeah, I just do S18, draft 1.1. 1 
Yep. And then and, just put strike all amendment. And my pardon, but um, is strike all in the way we use it uh, hyphenated or not? I have no idea. I don't think so. Is it, Brent? <laughs> it says striking out all, but we do a strike all sign. Um, no, it's not hyphenated. All right. Of my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Should be. It's a compound adjective. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I never was good in grammar or pronunciation or any of that stuff. Okay, folks. So let's go through section by section here. Section one really clarifies that going forward, when this becomes law, that at sentencing time or any time um, when they're dealing with making an agreement for a plea agreement or any of that, that the victim is informed of the maximum amount of earned time that the defendant could accrue. And that earned time only affects when the defendant is eligible to be released. And is eligible for parole consideration, but doesn't necessarily result in the defendant's release. It only means it's eligible. And this is one thing that was really important to the committee that the victims are notified. Hey, Alice, in the very beginning of this draft, they forgot to take out the word good. Uh, the second sentence. Right, second sentence. In. It's in several yeah. places throughout this. And it's been taken out. Well, it's a crossed out, yes, but yeah, but that one isn't crossed out. Wait a minute, are you in line, D? Line three, first page. I'm not seeing at or before. Go, would say, see where it says to the that's, House of Representatives. That's the title of that's the bill. The title. That's the title of the bill. Yeah, that's not it. The, that's not going to be in the green books. Okay, because it goes say they got the word "good" in there. Right. That's the title of the legislation where where it's going to be in the green book starts in section one what about line 16 on page one then through good time credit mine is not labeled by the names by the lines so are you in section 1d where i'm are you you're looking uh, at the draft or the bill mike you got to be on the draft you got to be on the draft yeah, draft the, the one that the one just sent email to us right draft 1.1 Yes, uh, well, the one I got does have numbers. So it's the sentence that says, unless I got the wrong thing here, it says, um, uh, Defendant shall serve. In an it, incarceration through good time credit. It's six what? lines down and six it's, lines down in section D. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. actually Line 16, Mike was right as far as the one I just printed off. They don't have line numbers. Defendant um, shall I, serve in incarceration through. He earned time then. There are line numbers on the one that I just posted. Right. That's what I'm looking at. Me too. So, Bryn. That may need to be changed to earn time credit. Okay, so you just posted one, right, Phil? It's going to be easier to look with the. Yes, I just posted it. Okay. Draft 1.1, strike all amendment. Okay. Oh, that makes it so much easier. <laughs> and it's got bigger, and it's bigger writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always good. Actual time the defendant shall serve in incarceration. So, Bryn, I know this is Eric's Eric's bill, and I know that you worked with us last year on Good Time. I'm thinking we've got to change that line, whatever it is, line 16, take out good and replace that with earned. 
Okay. Okay. So that's another amendment. Yes, because he's done that throughout the bill. Would you leave credit in or take credit out? Oh, they're getting credit, so you got to leave credit in. Okay. Through earn time credit. Good catch, Michael. Yeah, that is a good catch. <laughs> so in section two, the title has been changed. And this is talking, the rules have been changed, the implementate, implementing earned time program. And then it goes in line 13, earned time program. Lines 18 and 19, bring in the interrupted sentences. It's not, you cannot earn time if you're serving an interrupted sentence. And an interrupted sentence is sometimes people just come in on the weekend and then go back out. And that's geared for folks sometimes so they can keep their job. And then this is the top of page three. Explains that the program, um, we also the offender's ability to participate and receive earned time in the program shall be determined pursuant to subdivision five of this subsection. Then we'll have to go down to subdivision five because that is that is where we have the notwithstanding language. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number four, line 17, page five, page three. Hey, Alice. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, how come they took off arson, you, cause and death? Where are you? Under disqualifying offenses. The first one was arson, cause and death. Not on S18. That's what I'm looking at is S18. As it came over from the Senate? Yeah. I have murder in violation of 13 VSA 2301. Me too. I have murder. I don't have arson anywhere. Yeah, that's in, they must have uh, took arson yeah. off. Yeah, it was struck out. That whole portion was struck. It's... We're looking yes, at the ver that may have been the version as originally introduced. We're looking at the version that passed the Senate. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, right. introduced. Yeah. Yep. You got to go to the one that passed the Senate. Okay. So, what does the red italics mean? Uh, Bryn, can you, I don't have that. I think that's the language that got changed, red italics. Is that true, Bryn, when we- If it's a strike all, that then um, the official version shows the version that was introduced with red strikeout, and the red italics are the new language as added um, in the strike all. So it's just the difference between the official version and the unofficial version. Okay, thank you.
sentence to the work group. Karen, I just want to let you know. Karen, but she can't. She's, I didn't. I, that's what I said. I. That's what I thought, and I. And I said that, and I said, but I would ask you just to reconfirm that I was correct in my understanding. So. So I know I said I'd leave it open, but we're. She has the ability to come into the committee room. She's not testifying, so she has. I know. Do you? Ability are we going to do it in the, a few moments? Are you like? I think we're ready. Are we ready, folks? I'm I'll, here I'll text her. Just say we're getting ready. We're going to be voting here. So you she make the motion. I'm going to pass it. I mean, I'm going to second it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I don't want to cut her out, but she may choose to stay where she wants to be. And Eric's going to house. Uh -huh. <laughs> And confirm, are we getting another draft or are we voting on this draft? We The motion would be to um, vote the bill out, vote the strike all amendment out favorably as amended, which would be probably draft 1.2, I think. Because it's just- It'll, it'll be 2.1. 2.1? Mm -hmm. It would be draft 2.1. The only difference is in the very first section one there, that was a pickup, a great pickup. Um, on line 16, where we changed good to earn. That's the only change. And I think we'd be okay with that. To vote. <laughs> um, so you're texting Michelle, right? Yeah, I did. And I, um, I'm, Keeping my eye on my text. <laughs> okay. I told her she can pop in. Yeah, this is where if we were in the committee. We just go across the hall and pull her in. Mm -hmm. But if she she can choose not to vote on it too. Did you allow, did you let her know that, that she can choose not to vote on it? And she doesn't want to miss anything in Senate, in the House Judiciary? Yeah, I just, in the, my first text, I just said, I just wanted to let you know in, um, in case you wanted to vote. And then just let her know. She might be testifying. So she said, so I don't know. Can we do the vote and hold it open for a little bit in, in case, until we mm -hmm. adjourn yeah. for the afternoon? Well, after we vote, we'll be adjourning. Okay. All right. All right. I can I can throw something out for conversation. In filling out this form, I do need to list a reporter. Do do we have that? We're working on that. We have we we we've got one, I think. So do I just send it to Phil without that on that? And that's fine. no, no. We'll we'll do it after the vote. Okay. We're trying. It, we were trying to figure it out so that right now we're think we're planning on having Linda Joy because we need someone that really went through this in the past. Um. And because there's some legal issues that came up here this morning, I think it's really important to have someone with some legal background on the floor. It looks like Michelle is testifying now. Is she? Yep. Well, I'm ready for a vote. We can do it. must be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any, so she hasn't had any word here. Well, let's let's make the motion. Um, I would entertain a motion to pass out draft 2.1, which we understand the only difference from draft 1.1 to 2.1 is the word change on line 16 of the first page that changes good to earn. That's the only change. I second it. So well, somebody's got to move it. Somebody's got to move, move it first. Motion. Whatever. Okay. You move it, I'll second it. Okay, the heck? moved and Marsha seconded it. We vote out draft 2.2, 2.1 S18 favorably. Is there any further discussion? 
If not, Karen, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, Representative Taylor. Yes. Representative Sullivan. Yes. Representative Morgan. Yes. Representative Martel. Yes. Representative Dolan. Yes. Representative Campbell. Yes. Representative Boslin. Representative Bachelor. Yes. Representative Morrissey. Yes. Representative Coffey. Yes. And Representative Emmons. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. So if we leave this open, we're kind of, some of us are going to have to stay here to still meet. So I'm not sure what to do at this point. Kurt? Kurt? Um, there's a something I'd like to say before we leave S12 completely. You mean um, S18? Uh, yeah, that one, whatever. <laughs> whatever we just <laughs> We're all off. ready to get rid of it. <laughs> to yeah. be honest with you. They all gone. She just finished. If you, she's, if she, she's going to pop in. Okay. Okay. And she, Madam Chair, should I just sent you uh, via Bryn version the 2.1. Okay. So I believe I should post that as a draft. And then when we get the final copy from the drafts people, I can post it as recommended by House Committee on Corrections and Institutions. Is that correct? correct. Yes. Okay. So committee, I need to leave now. Is, it, is that okay? That's I'll great. Thank, with you, me. Thank you, Bryn. <laughs> so you're going to send this to the editors? Yep. Draft yep. point one? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bryn. All right. Thank you, Brad. Sure. Bye bye. So poor Michelle is going to come in here cold turkey. Well, I told her that we were holding the vote open for you so far. Like, please come now, though. It's going to be hard for her to process where we are in terms of a strike call. I think it'll be okay. I'm just going to say we're voting. You know, the motion was to vote. S18 out favorably with the language that was proposed this morning from the Attorney General's office. Here she comes. Because that's what okay. we did, right? Should I tell her what the vote is for now? I let her know where it was. Yeah. She would have heard that. Yeah. Welcome, Michelle. I know you're juggling a lot of things, but we, <laughs> we we're at the point of having a new having a draft and we're ready to vote. So the question, the motion on the floor is that we pass out S18 favorably that incorporates the, the amendment that we discussed this morning from the attorney general's office, that amendment. So we have done the roll and the vote right now is 10 in favor um, and you're the last person to vote. Okay, I would actually like to vote no. So Karen, call the roll. Michelle, you're muted. Yep, yep. Okay, so Representative Boslin? No. Great, so the vote was 10-1-0 on the bill. Uh, Linda's gonna be the reporter. So when we get the edited draft of 2.1, um, this has to be sent. I'm going to let the clerk's office know that we have a bill coming to strike all. Um, and Linda, you're going to have to, I'm not sure if you sign something, because this is a bill that gets voted. Normally, you would take the, the original bill and the strike all amendment and walk down to the house clerk's office, and they would have you sign the amendment. So I'm not sure how all of this is done electronically. Linda, I can send you the instructions that committee assistants uh, got that explains what uh, your responsibility is. 
apparently that, we that as good, committee as, we as committee assistants aren't able to submit it to the clerk's office. So I'm letting the clerk's office. I'll figure it out. That we have if, a, if you say. that we have a strike call to S18. Uh, just voted it. And 10, 1, 0. And Representative Sullivan, you're the only Sullivan, right? As of this year, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I am just sending the clerk's office an email because they text, they send an email out to the chairs every day to see if we have anything. I'm gonna say it needs to go to editing. Representative Allison, Emmons, is it okay for me to go back to judiciary? They're still yes. taking testimony. Yes, we're done for the day and we're probably not okay. gonna to meet tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. So I sent it out. So I think we're done for work today. And then I'm not anticipating Working. Well, I more. still have my little speech to guy. I know. Okay. So our work is done for today. We're not planning on meeting tomorrow. We're still working on scheduling. And maybe when we finish up here and get done, I don't know if Mary and Sarah, you might have a little bit of time to work with Phil just to kind of confirm up our schedule for next week for that. Yep. So, hmm? yes, I can do that. Okay. That should Kurt. be fine. I just have to a little after four get off. Yes. Okay. Kurt? Uh, yes, this is kind of in the vein of Representative Dolan wanting to know how we can avoid these things in the future or how we can improve on the process. And it's part of this that we haven't discussed much, but the fact that we did it two years ago or so or last year using emergency rules um, is has turned into, I think it's added to the confusion because the emergency rules started the process January 1st and there was, we didn't have the public hearings as part of emergency rules. It was when they were developing the real world, real rules that the public hearings issue came up and this whole thing started percolating. It may very well have percolated anyway, but the fact was we used emergency rules when there was no emergency. And that I think caused a problem because we could not say, and even in the um, justice oversight, I believe meetings when they talked about this, we could not say, well, we were in an emergency and so we had to move quickly. When in fact, there was no emergency and we used emergency rules. And I think as a lesson for the future, we have to be very careful when we use emergency rules, when they really, there is no emergency. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to say, yeah. thanks. And I know that was, a, you kept bringing that up last year when we were working it through. I was, I was trying to avoid saying, I told you so. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, the, the bill did come, back, did come over from the Senate last year, S-133. And it was quite clear that some folks in the other body wanted the emergency rules. And we tried to negotiate that and it was not going anywhere. Sarah? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had wrapped up. I, I thought also that part of it was because the year before we had passed S112, which was earned good time. And because it would have come into play, play on, a normal, on a normal rulemaking process, but because with S338, which was Justice Reinvestment 2, mm -hmm. it encompassed earned good time that they didn't think it was, I thought the thinking was, is it wasn't really fair to stop earned good time as we we're developing this new bill um, and delay it even further. Um, and that's why it was an emergency rule. That's That was my understanding at the time. Is that accurate? That's fair to say. And uh, there's a that's a combination of why it came over in S-133 in the Senate bill last year with the emergency rules. And people were pretty adamant that they wanted the program to get up and running. So we had but that- there was, no, 
Hmm? There, there was no emergency. There was no flood. There was no horrendous thing that was going to happen. That's why we had to put in the pat in the had to also put in there the fact that this would automatically be considered an emergency and override that. If it were a real emergency, we wouldn't have had to put that in there. Mm-hmm. But one thing that we did do, we did extend the date out of when the um, the rules needed to be, the formal, the permanent rules, not the emergency rules, but the other rules needed to be in place. Originally, I believe that was in, I think that was in the middle of March, middle of February or middle of March. And we extended yeah. that out quite a bit to the yeah. end of June. So that's how we at least got some time on that end. So I think this is it for the week. Um, I think tomorrow may be a short day on the floor uh, because it is Good Friday um, and we do traditionally honor that. Um, And I'm not sure if there's much on the floor, but I'm not anticipating any committee time tomorrow. We're gonna shift gears a little bit. We're gonna start working next week on S45, which is now that you got your head around earn time while somebody's incarcerated, we're going to be talking about probation, which is the front end before anybody ever enters into an incarcerative setting and how there can, we worked on this last year about having some form of uh, credit for time served, credit for time served, earned time uh, on your probation, where if you are behaving and uh, living by the conditions that the court has placed on you. You're not doing technical violations or new new crime of sorts. You could get um, possibly a shorter probation term. Um, What we've done this time is have a check-in about halfway through your probation for that. And that was a result of work that was done with the Council of State Governments last year and the working group with that. So it, it's a little different than what we just went through for folks who are incarcerated. These are for folks who are on probation. So you're gonna get educated on what probation is because that's through the courts. Uh, we're also trying to set up some time to hear from the chair of the parole board so folks can understand parole. Parole is at the other end after a person's incarcerated. So you've got probation on the front end before they're incarcerated. You have furlough, which is determined by DOC. And then you have parole, which is determined by the parole board. And there's different conditions set on each one of those statuses by different entities. So we're gonna start shifting gears a little bit. We're gonna work on S45, and then we're gonna do a lot more background information Uh, in terms of corrections is to help folks understand corrections a little bit better. And then we also have the RFP feasibility study that BGS and DOC put out with HOC, H-O-K. That looks like that will be available the week of April 12th. Um, How much did they pay for that study? We put in 200,000, 250,000. We put in the money. For yeah. that. Well, we knew most of what they reported to us. Yeah, but that laid some foundation for what's happening for their second part. Um, so that's going to be the week of the 12th, April. Uh, we're going to try to have a joint meeting with Senate Institutions Committee on that. That will have to be an after- afternoon meeting. I'm recommending more on a Tuesday than on a Wednesday or Thursday. And I do go over to Senate institutions on Tuesday at 1.30 to finish the walkthrough on the Capitol bill, which will probably take a good hour and a half. If you're lucky. (laughs) So Kurt? Uh, Yeah, there was a very good presentation to the Council of State Governments about probation and how it works in Vermont at one of their meetings. If, If anybody wants the link to that presentation, I can probably find it just in preparation for for probation. So what might be good, Kurt, if you find that, um, just email that to the members and Phil, and maybe once we start working on S45, Phil can post that on our webpage. Okay, I'll do that. 
That would be that would be good to do that. It's very helpful. Anything else before we close up? I want to thank you all. You know, we came together. We did the work on the bill. Um, I want to thank you. And I'm glad it's behind us at this point. And then the report on the floor, Linda will do the report on the floor, but we are there to back her up because, um, you know, there may be quite a few questions on the floor and we're there to back up our committee member who is reporting this. We're not gonna leave folks stranded out on the floor. And Linda, you know that at some, any point you can yield to that and hopefully I can help. If not, I'll yield to Sarah or Kurt. <laughs> you got so it. Phil. <laughs> Phil. Yeah, Phil will be there holding our hands. Thank or you Butch. all. Or Butch. Yeah, I wish yeah. we could have Butch report this. You're absolutely right. Butch is the one that should be reporting this. I'll negotiate with him. Yeah, I'll go negotiate. <laughs> I'll tell him, I'll text him and say, Butch, you're reporting this. We're getting leave of the house to suspend the rules. <laughs> that would be a good, good April Fool's. <laughs> so on YouTube, thank you folks for listening in. Our week is done and we'll see.